a lot of BDC stuff over here. I am Steve Brown, I'm Head of Corporate Services at Basketball District Council. I just want to go through a few housekeeping issues first of all. So in terms of fire, we're not expecting um, the fire alarm to go off this morning, so if it does, please follow me out of the building. You can see the exits marked and we assemble on the market square just, just here, but if you follow me and then we'll let you know when it's safe to come back in. Toilets, for any of you who don't know, are immediately outside. Uh, please, you know, don't sit there in agony. <laughs> Go for a toilet break as and when you need, as and when you need to. Um, phones, you're all busy people. I know you have to be looking at your phones, but if you can just make sure they're put on silent. And obviously, if you take a call, please feel free to, to step outside. Um, can I just say that? I want to thank everyone for being here today. It is an impossible task having put this together and shoehorned uh, a lot of presentations into this morning's session. So I'll try and stick to time, but I've got a feeling it may run away with us. And I know some people have got to leave early, so just go up to when you need to. So if I can hand over to Dave Armager, the Chief Executive of Basketball District Council. Thank you, Steve, and, and thank you all for attending, and, and indeed, thank you for all the contributions you've made to the, to the work we've been doing on this. I think the, the important thing is the first summit, I can't use the phrase already, um, last year, in July last year, was really important to us because it gave us a lot of sort of valuable information that we used to reset our priorities and to focus our resources over that, the following year to target the issues that have been identified in the conversations that took place. So, it was incredibly invaluable to us and, and that process led into a massive amount of work over the following year which you all played a significant role in and certainly on behalf of the council I'd like to thank you for that um, but we know the job isn't over and we are very very clear that this is something that is going to continue for a significant period of time so the fact that we need to gather together and to, to redo this is unfortunate but I think is testament also to the quality of the partnership we've got in the area and the fact that we can bring so many people together from so, so many sort of background to, to look at where our priorities should be is incredibly important and a really sort of valuable um, resource we can put draw upon. So we certainly look forward to hearing what you identify as the priorities and then what we need to do is to try to work out how we can use what resources we've got and how we can work with yourselves to take that forward to make a difference because in, in the end that's what it's about is making a difference to people out there who are struggling and that's a, that's the target that we had we set in the first summit and we're going to push forward with with this going forward and we will meet as many times as we need to we're not setting up an end date on this we are looking at how we address the issues of our local community and if we need to meet again on this we will do but certainly i think we can look back and say we've made a difference we just need to keep pushing but uh, i certainly look forward to hearing everything that's said today um, and hopefully we can get some really positive outcomes so thank you very much thanks dave so just to reiterate what dave said um, i think we have been very, very lucky in Bassett Law because of the strength of the partnerships and the place-based approach that we have in Bassett Law to stand up and response very early last year in response to what we knew was likely to be facing our communities and the individuals in our communities. So I just reiterate Dave's thanks to everyone for, their, for the work that was done. Um, and I think it's a tribute to many of the initiatives that were followed in Bassett Law that actually they were copied and used elsewhere, not just in Nottinghamshire, but in other parts of the country. So again, that's a tribute to, to the work that's being done. The purpose of the report that is on the table, um, there are a couple of issues there. First of all, we think it's important from a council point of view to provide some transparency on the money that was spent and allocated where it went, to give us an opportunity to reflect on some of the initiatives that we identified a year ago and that we tried to progress over the, the last year, to look at the effectiveness of the, those um, and have some honesty about what worked well, what maybe could have been a little bit better. But the biggest thing for me from this morning's session is 
really moving forward is to prepare for the autumn and winter and the potential challenges that we see coming forward. I'm not an economist. Um, the report that you've got, when I started writing it a while ago, there was some optimism there, and there is still some optimism. Um, at the time I started writing the report, there were indications that the rate of inflation was going to come down uh, quite considerably into this um, summer. Food inflation was starting to come down, etc. Now we see, um, as from Saturday, there will be some reductions in fuel prices, etc. Okay, inflation is maybe not going quite as we would have liked. Um, and we now have the looming pressure of increasing um, more um, interest rates that will in fact have a considerable impact on those uh, paying mortgages. So the pressure is not going away, the cost of living is not going away. And irrespective of inflation falling, the fact is that from a year ago, prices are still higher for people to have to pay. So that's a reality. So from our summit that wasn't a summit last year, we identify a number of key themes. Household energy, we knew that the, the, all the indications were that the prices were going to considerably increase, and obviously that would have an impact particularly on vulnerable households. Fuel prices, and particularly um, recognising in a large rural area like Bassett Hall, where people are dependent on cars, and also we have a lot of properties in our rural areas that are off-grid, and rely on um, uh, liquid, liquid uh, fuel, etc., um, to heat their homes. That would be an issue. Food was also identified as a, a major pressure with increasing food prices, but also the reliance often for people who are struggling to make ends meet, the reliance on people like the food bank and food hubs as a way of trying to um, mitigate some of their outgoings. That and we, we saw that as potential pressure, and we will hear later how that had, did manif uh, manifest itself. Yeah. Housing, not just council housing, but particularly in the private um, rented sector, would be a considerable pressure for people there, and also for landlords as well. Uh, that would be uh, pressure. Taxation and benefits, obviously, predominantly a council issue but it impacts particularly on people like Citizens Advice, where people are looking for help and support, but we knew there would be a demand on our own services and the range of initiatives that the government was putting in place, such as the Household Support Fund, that would require administration at the local level. And then fi the final block that we identified there was we needed to sort of recognise that the cost of living would impact on our own employees, who would be feeling the pressures themselves. Uh, also those organisations, many of whom are represented here today, in the voluntary sector with volunteers. And with the double whammy of COVID, then followed by the cost of living, we knew that um, obviously there was a reduction in volunteers as people were trying to seek employment and had less time for volunteering, but also mental health, which I think we all can see across all of our organisations, followed again from COVID as having a huge impact on people, and that is not going to go away in a So from that, we developed an action plan. Advice and information was a key point, and we have produced a, a range of information as a partnership to try and help people, uh, both in electronic formats, but also hard copy versions of information. Warmth, so various initiatives were followed in terms of uh, warm spaces, warm packs, and we'll hear a little bit more about that later on. Food, as I've alluded to, the support for the food hubs, um, and particularly for the food bank. Communication, critical. Um, there is so much information out there, it is difficult for any single organisation to absorb that and disseminate it. So I think one of the key benefits of our partnership has been is to pull that information between us and look at how we work closely together to get that information out. We made attempts uh, and had some success in how we actually look at data. Particularly in the public sector, we hold a lot of information, um, but we tend not to be very good at using it, if I'm honest. So this was really looking at trying to look at how we could use some lifetime data 
to actually um, see what was going on and help influence our response. So, for information from Robert at the food bank, we can track on a weekly basis where food, the demand for food parcels and more importantly where food parcels were going. So one of the little things there that was interesting that was we started to see communities in basketball that had no prior engagement really with the food bank or need to use the food bank. We're seeing it in areas that you might not expect to see food bank users um, in. We mentioned the warm spaces so we could use the data um, the geographic information to plot where people were located near wall spaces. And so some of that started to inform our analysis and we could have done, we could, if we had the capacity across the partnership, we could have done more with that. So there's a fancy uh, pie chart there that you probably can't read um, that shows where the council's money went. Um, the council, through its politicians, took the decision to allocate £294,000 and I can tell you that is a fair chunk of money for us as a small district council and that was allocated from our reserves towards the cost of living. And you can see how some of that was divvied div div up into various initiatives. Um, we still have around 38,000 that is unallocated un and the cabinet, when it meets in July, will make a decision about what it wants to do with that money. But being open with our colleagues here in this room, two thirds of our funding went outside of the council. It went to the partnership. So, you know, I don't want people thinking, well, the council just sat on its own money. It went out there, it was used, and I believe beneficially within the community. So, um, on your tables, hopefully there's a copy for everyone, there is a copy of this evaluation report that um, has been done and I've also sent you the link for the flip um, book version of this and I'd like to thank uh, Rachel at PCBS who put it together. Anyone who knows me and looks at that report will know Steve Brown didn't visually put that together. So uh, thank you Rachel for your help with, help with that. So this looks at sort of where we've been, provides some analysis. It predominantly looks at those organisations funded by the District Council. There's a heck of a lot of work that has gone on in our communities that isn't reflected in there. And um, we acknowledge that and hope that we can be a way of sort of um, reflecting some of that work um, in the future. But I'm a historian. Uh, I believe you have to know where you've come from to know where you're going. But equally, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Apparently, when I looked that up on Google, that's attributed to David Beckham. But uh, anyway, there the, the analogy between me and David Beckham finishes. No, I'm not bad for um, the So I believe, you know, we could spend a lot of time reflecting on what has happened, but really, as I said from today, we need to be moving forward and I'm hoping later on we can start planning using all the expertise that sits in this room to identify, we can look at what we did and some of it we probably hopefully want to retain but we've got to be honest, the capacity and funding is reducing across all of our sectors we can't keep relying on the voluntary sector for support all the time and just assuming that it's an empty well that we can keep going to draw the buckets of water to put fires out with. So we need to make some, we're going to have to make some hard decisions about where money and resources goes in the future that we can do locally, how we can work together locally to draw down potentially sources of external funding. But that's really the purpose of today is to plan for the autumn and winter. So as I said, future actions, how do we coordinate ourselves? We have many of you are represented on the Basketball Financial Inclusion Forum. I don't think we should reinvent the wheel. That has worked well for 20 years. We may, may need to bolster it, but it, it worked well for us. Um, so I would suggest that's the key thing moving forward. Communication, I think we're going to have to spend more time moving forward on communication and that dissemination of information and getting that support and advice out to people locally. Capacity development, we'll hear a little bit from um, Andrea later on from the BCBS. 
about the impacts on the sector uh, and where we can uh, grow capacity and uh, some of the initiatives that have taken place locally. Data I've mentioned, continuing using that. A whole right, um, host of community initiatives. When I asked the organisations that were funded to give us a report back on the outcomes of what they did, I also asked them to identify potential issues moving forward, and you'll see some of those um, initial suggestions and ideas are in the back of the report that give us, again, I think something to build on as we move forward. And finally, I mentioned funding. Um, I'm not going to take any questions because time is so tight. And I'm going to hand over now to Karen and Chris from Citizens Advice, and we're going to seamlessly move laptops. I didn't promise seamless.